Okay, so here are the facts. The facts are that on the 5th of May 2017, at about 12 p.m., officers of the Ghana Immigration Service, Obwasi Municipality Command, arrested four male uh, Chinese nationals, namely uh, Joa, Zingjen, uh, etc. Their names are mentioned uh, nicely, uh, who were actively mining at an alleged, at an illegal mining site at Bepotente in the uh, Amansia Central District. <coughs> of the Ashanti region. All right. Upon the arrest, the four Chinese nationals told the arresting officer that they were sent to mine at the site by the accused person herein, uh, and the, the accused person herein, which is Aisha Wan, and their passports were with her in Kumasi. The arresting officer sent the four arrested persons uh, first to the Obwasi office of the Ghana Immigration Service and subsequently to the Kumasi office. Uh, and Hong, who had received information about the arrest of her Chinese employees, proceeded to the regional immigration office, Kumasi, to find out if they had been brought there even before the arresting officers arrived in Kumasi. She left upon realizing they had not yet been brought to the Kumasi office. So that's interesting. So Aisha Wan got wind of the fact that her people had been arrested, and she boldly went to the Kumasi uh, Immigration Central Office to demand sort of uh, to see their people. The regional immigration office, Kumasi, called Aisha to report to the office with the passport of the four arrested uh, miners, illegal miners, if you like. With great difficulty, Aisha Wan eventually produced the passports of only uh, one of them, uh, actually two of them. The visas of these arrested persons showed that uh, they came to Ghana on B1 visas, that's business visas, uh, which did not qualify them to be engaged in any type of work in Ghana. They were, however, engaged by uh, Aisha Wan to undertake mining operations without requisite license at Bepo Tintin. Investigations disclosed that Aisha Wan took over the farms of several farmers uh, by mining around their farms and destroying access routes to the farms till they eventually gave over their farms to her for mining purposes. That's interesting. That's the, the facts of the matter presented to the court by the Attorney General, that Aisha Wan did take over forcibly, take over people's farms by destroying access routes. And then uh, when you are unhappy, she pays you and then you go away. She had, um, in the process of mining, destroyed their cash crops, sources of drinking water, and livelihoods. Okay. The accused person, which is Aisha Wan, was arraigned before the High Court Accra on charges of illegally undertaking a small-scale mining operation contrary to Section 99 of the Minerals and Mining Act 2006, Act 703, and illegal employment of foreign nationals contrary to Section 24 and 52, 1D, of the Immigration Act 2000, Act 573. On 19 December 2018, the Attorney General entered a nolly prosecutor and uh, terminated the trial. The same day, the Controller General of the Ghana Immigration Service revoked her permit to remain in Ghana indefinitely. That's part of the story as far as we are concerned because ahead of the 2018 trial, Aisha Wan had been issued a permit to remain in Ghana indefinitely and that was issued by the government preceding the government of 2016 and that we need to understand why that happened. Ordered, immigration ordered her immediate repatriation to China and directed her to stay out of Ghana until the Controller General approved of her future re-entry into Ghana. Uh, uh, consequently, Aisha was put on Ethiopian Airlines flight number so and so, which took off about 12.50 p.m. on the 19th of December 2018 to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and route to uh, Go, uh, Guangzhou in China. She sat on seat number 32F, economy class, and her travel, um, her travel documents were handed over to the captain of the flight to be handed over to, the, to her upon arrival at her final destination, in Guazhou in China. Contrary to the direction of the Controller General issued under Section 20 of the Immigration Act, uh, state security agencies received information that she had re-entered Ghana and she was subsequently arrested on 2nd September 2022 in Kumasi. This re-entry was in total defiance of the declare order by the Controller General of 19 December 2018. Upon her arrest, Yu Hung had in her possession two Chinese passports, one in her name, uh, Yu Hung, and another in the name, Wan Rixia, both of which had her photographs. Okay.
So that's the story. So we're now going in to understand the charges that have been preferred against Aisha Wan, but the story is that um, she was doing illegal mining. Uh, she was uh, prosecuted in 2018. For some reason, the Attorney General of the day, Gloria Kufu, felt that there was no need to continue the prosecution. She entered an only prosecutor in favor of a repatriation of the accused person. The accused person was repatriated. It's found that she slipped back into Ghana. The immigration officer, uh, the controller of immigration, also had another responsibility, and that's uh, part of the concern tonight. The other responsibility was that President Mohammed's administration has given Aisha Wan leave to remain in Ghana indefinitely. I'm not sure why we don't hear that as part of the story, but in understanding what we do as, in, with, with, as a nation with Aisha Wan, we have to ask the administration that what went into the they're giving Aisha one an indefinite story. I'm asking that question, and I think people should ask that question. Uh, the Attorney General at the time, Marietta Briopon, let me ask you that question. What, what kind of advice did you render to President Mahama that Aisha one be allowed to be given and issued in her passport leave to remain indefinitely in Ghana? Marietta Briopon, Hannah Tete, the Foreign Minister, you all have to help us understand this situation. I'm sure it will help the prosecution to properly prosecute Aisha one because this is Ghana and government's a continuum. So the government that issued Aisha one they uh, leave to remain indefinitely. It's the same government that's prosecuted in terms of the contextual meaning of government. Government is a continuum. But this is President Mohammed's administration, Foreign Minister, and maybe Parliament should ask her. And such a Parliament are very quick to ask questions about almost everything. Parliament, hello? You should ask the former Foreign Minister and the former Attorney General what went into the decision to issue Aisha one in her passport, leave to remain indefinitely in Ghana. And those who comment on social media uh, from that side, please ask your people before you come and comment that what happened, what, what went into that decision? Foreign Minister and Attorney General, you really have to help us understand this as we go to the charges that have now been preferred against her in the court. So let me walk through the charges as quickly explained. explain. So count one is that uh, Aisha Wan is being uh, allegedly accused of undertaking a mining operation without a license, contrary to Section 992A of the Minerals and Mining Act 2006, Act 703, as amended by the Minerals and Mining Amendment Act of 2019, Act 995. Okay, so tell us, what are the ingredients? So, first and foremost, before an individual is found guilty of an offence, there is something we call ingredients of an offence. Mm -hmm. And the ingredients of an offence are the elements of your offence that must be proved, must be proven, to be positive before the individual can indeed be convicted. Mm -hmm. And so if you take the charge, the charge is often the offense, you have to glean or extract certain elements that are present. If you read the count, which is the charge, mm -hmm. you would observe that there is, first, there has to be mining. There has to be mining. There has to be so mining. So the prosecution will have to show that there was mining. Indeed, there was indeed okay. mining. And not maybe rumors of mining or alleged whatever that they got from the, 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 the media. But they have and it to must be mining it. involving the accused person. Exactly. Because Even if she's not there herself? If it's on her instigation. And that's why there is facility. Mm -hmm. There's another charge. Mm -hmm. That's what's to cover her in that regard. Mm -hmm. And so there must be mining and then the mining must be done without a license. And we have to understand the philosophy behind mining with a license. Mm -hmm. Even if the land is yours. Pursuant to Article 257 of the Constitution, all natural resources, mineral resources in their raw form or in their pure state in the land are property of the state to be held by the president in trust for the people. Mm -hmm. And this, this is something we borrowed from the United Kingdom because in the United Kingdom, even swans mm -hmm. belong to the, uh, the king. Mm -hmm. I almost mm -hmm. said the queen. Well, uh, the, the monarch. The monarch mm -hmm. <laughs> belong to the king of, of England. And so in this instance, we as a republic have said that mineral resources in their pure state belong to the state. However, it is held in trust by the president on behalf of everybody. Mm -hmm. And so if you also then go on to the... So, so that the issue about the, the, the mining without a yeah. license has to do with just beginning to mine, even if the land is yours, as even, it were. Uh, even if the land, if it's even your house that you have built on, and they find resource, you find gold under your house. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to you. You have, you have, to, have report to report it. to the Minerals, yes, okay. the Minerals Commission. And, and, and so the, uh, um, uh, any mining of that nature without a license falls under count one. Exactly. Okay, let's move on to count two. Count two says that facilitating and uh, the participation of persons engaged in mining operation contrary to section 99. Okay, so that's, that's what you're saying. Facilitating the participation of mining of persons engaged in the mining. Okay, so that, that comes about the story where she, they found four people mining, uh -huh. and they said that Aisha Wan is the one who asked us to come exactly. and mine. Exactly. And, so and she showed interest in that by also appearing at the police immigration police. and police, asking about those people, asking yes, after them. Yes. Yeah. And, and she actually passport. showed that she held on to 
they have of the well. passports and she released two of them. Exactly. Okay, so what cuts through count two? Good. So counts two, the ingredients are there has to be a facilitation. Mm -hmm. Facilitation can be anything. It depends on the facts. So it's a case by case basis. It can be advice. It can be providing materials. It can be even ordering an individual. Generally, you would have thoughts of abetments. Mm -hmm. So maybe they could have said abetment of undertaking a mining operation without a license. Mm -hmm. But there is a rule that says that specific laws or laws of specific application take precedence over laws of general application. It is couched in, ma in Latin as generalia specialibus non derogans. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, if the law is specifically saying that facilitating the participation of mining carries this punishment, then this is what has to take precedence over any general law to that effect. And so, so that if she were to present a defense for herself on count one, mm -hmm. that, well, I wasn't mining. You didn't yeah. see me mining. Then you can pick her on count two and say, but you were facilitating. facilitating exactly. And, and the prosecution must show evidence of that. Yes. Beyond reasonable doubt. Yes. I mean, the, the facts, rest in peace, okay, so the facts speak for itself. The fact that you are holding a foreign national, your, you know, your fellow citizens' passports. But it doesn't mean that I ask him to go and mine. Oh, I mean... That, that I'm holding a passport doesn't these, mean ask him. These are because, the, because the standard of proof is mm -hmm. beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt. Exactly. So it's very tricky, isn't it? Yes. But so see, if I say that I regularly hold the passports of people because they don't speak English and, mm -hmm. and all that, and I have been in Ghana for a while, so I speak English, I don't know what they were doing there, mm -hmm. and I just heard that they had gone to the Bipotin thing. I'm not yeah. sure what they were doing there, but I have their passport. That, that will count as raising doubt. Okay. But you see, in the case of R versus Palmer, mm -hmm. it was... Reasonable doubt was defined as doubt that you allow to influence your decision. If that is so, then what amount of doubt would convince anybody or any judge to say Aisha Wang is innocent? I mean, well, these are just if the standard of proof is not met, then mm -hmm. she's innocent. Yes, but in this instance, yeah. I mean, this woman mm -hmm. is not the first time. Yeah, yeah, you, can, you, can say, you can say <laughs> refs is, are, refs is are all you want, yes. but the facts before the judge must be delivered without reasonable uh, doubt. So that is when we have to get yeah. evidence. We have to get witnesses to come and testify that this is the woman we saw. We have to get the co-accused. The state has to produce the accused persons. And then the accused person will either decide if they want to testify against mm -hmm. Aisha Wang by saying that, oh, she was the one who directed us to do so and so. However, there's a lot of speculation as though she's already guilty in the media. I mean, these are just... Well, yeah, there's, a, there's been a big we media are, trial against we, we, her. Yeah, anyway. we have yeah. to wait for the court Let's to make that determination. Let's go to count three, the last but one. Illegal employment of foreign nationals contrary to Section 24 of the Immigration Act. Illegal employment of foreign nationals by whom? By another foreign national? It's, or by it's a maybe, local person? It may be by one, another foreign national. It may be by a local person. So this law has a history. Mm -hmm. In the 1960s, the late 1960s, early 1970s, during the time of Prime Minister Buzia, mm -hmm. there was a law, the, you know, the Aliens Compliance Order, yeah. where the Prime Minister, the PP, the Progress Party government, um, asked I people to leave the country. Asked people to leave the country yeah. if they were not... <laughs> we don't want to use the word SAC. Yes, uh, yeah, but they yeah, asked yeah, them, to leave, them the to leave the country. If and they were not properly registered. Properly, yes. Yeah. And the rationale behind that law was not that we were, homo we were, um, we were xenophobic. Mm -hmm. No, the rationale behind that law was that foreign West African nationals had taken a lot of employment opportunities by Ghanaians, mm -hmm. and Ghanaians were complaining. Mm -hmm. And so Prime Minister Buzia then got frustrated and said that, okay, let us pass this law and then make sure that... And so since then, there has been a conscious effort to enact legislation that more or less safeguards local employment. Mm -hmm. And so it may... As it is in every country, really. As, yes, as it is in every country. In fact, if you even look at the GIPC Act, mm -hmm. Section 25, 26, 27, and 28, there is a large, you know, there is an extensive legal regime that specifies um, op, um, jobs that foreigners can participate in, pure water business, provision of textbooks and, and exercises. Foreigners cannot participate. They cannot participate. Yeah. They cannot participate in taxis mm -hmm. with a fleet of cars less than 20. Mm -hmm. They cannot uh, participate in pure time business. I've already said it. They cannot even hold leases for more than 50 years. Mm -hmm. And in Act, Act 1036, that's the New Land Act 2020, um, a foreign company is defined to be a company, in, that's in Section 10, Subsection 10, mm -hmm. a company whose equity shareholding is more than 40% owned by non ghanaians they cannot even hold oh, that I for see. more than 50 years. So once you are more than 40%, you're a foreign company. 40, yes. Even if you are ex were established by a Ghanaian. So Gassim, yeah. we have to check whether it is still a foreign whether company. It's because foreign it has significant company. Norwegian interest. Uh, exactly. So, uh, so that it's, those, are, those are interesting dynamics. So, right. so, so it has here, to be an employee. So this employment of foreign nationals mm -hmm. is targeted both at a Ghanaian and a foreigner. Exactly. So if you're a Ghanaian that employs a foreigner mm -hmm. wrongly, you can fall under this. And you, you also have to remember that their visas did not give them 
the permission. But that's then the case. You see, so this is your ingredients. Fair ingredient number one that you put here. There has to be an employment. Yes. Who, who's, what's the definition? Are we going to go to the Labour Act? Good. So employment is not easy to define. Yes. Um, because you may have in persons who are independent contractors. You haven't employed them. For instance, if you get a plumber to come and fix your mm. things at home, the plumber is, is not your employee. You have called him you know, to work for you. However, what we often, or what at times is used to ascertain who an employee is, is if he is under such a control of the employer or the company, such that um, his remuneration, payment of his taxes is on the bed, is on the shoulder of his employee, his remuneration, constant regular remuneration is on the back of the employee, as well as other factors, then we can say that you are in the employment of an individual. But it's on a case by case basis, and that is one thing we should always ascertain. So it's they have to look at the facts in terms of the of definition the of yes, uh, and that's the defence we can use. Mm -hmm. That's why well, they were independent contractors. I yeah. was to I didn't employ them. And then they said the employment must be of persons. It's making the employment definition even more complicated. Yes, the persons must be of foreign national. That's okay, that's yeah, okay. That the employment yeah. must be illegal. Yeah. And so, so, so here the on counts three, the prosecution led by the attorney general will have to drill down on employment to convince. His lordship that there, there was a, a relationship yeah. that we can properly describe as employment yeah that's, that's interesting okay yeah. you didn't tell us the the uh, upon conviction what happens mm. how many years and all that Oppo there but let's go we, to count four and okay. finish it entering ghana while prohibited from re-entry contrary to say i think that's quite straightforward yes it looks like counts four is very straightforward they're going to yeah. get here on that because yeah. he re-entered ghana when, when the control of immigration has yes. said don't come. don't come back okay so you want you're saying in your ingredients that there has to be a re-entry which we know uh, if she's she's is she's found on only this one does she go to jail we cannot ascertain yet if mm. uh, if she goes there what for is the punishment the, what, uh -huh. for the punish the punishment for the charges um have been done um uh, um, um, formerly prior, I think mm -hmm. last week, that was when the Attorney General yeah. hadn't proffered these charges against it. That was done last week. But there are some concerns among the public as to why the Attorney General is getting concerned, why he's getting concerned about uh, what? Getting con concerned with the trial because a lot of people are not used to seeing the Attorney General. Oh, because it's now become a matter of national importance. Exactly. And then the record also shows that the Attorney General is taking this from national security, taking over from national, national security, security to begin the prosecution. So yes. I think it's fair that in terms of the role of illegal mining mm -hmm. in our community and what we it's say about Galamsey and Galam Stop and all of that, yes, it has to be elevated to the level of the Attorney General for yes. him to render the prosecution. Yes. And let's see what yes. happens. If, I mean, Article 88 places all prosecutions in Ghana at the behest mm. of the Attorney General. Mm. And so it's, it's a very important office and... He has a responsibility to oversee. If there is even a docket behind in some town and the attorney general is of the view that it is something very important, he can call and personally prosecute. But what we need to show also is that apart from count four, all of these counts, counts were already in the charges of 2018 upon which the Nolly prosecutor was entered. Was entered yeah. Yes, yeah. but the thing about Nolly prosecutor is it's the power given to the attorney general to seize um, um, prosecution of an individual. Now, nolly prosequire is not always about legal um, reasoning. reasoning or legal yeah. technicality. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but last year, when Jacob Zuma was yeah. being prosecuted, you remember what in happened South in, 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 in South Africa? And so, at times, it may have certain... Well, they can do a nolly prosequire just so that they re-arrest and prosecute and again prosecute by again. amending the charges. Yes, or yeah. by ensuring that there is a relatively more friendly atmosphere for the, for for the, the prosecution. Yeah. Because... Um, there's one thing known as prosecutorial discretion. Mm -hmm. At times, when you end up prosecuting somebody, it causes more harm than good. Mm. And so these are things that are, are taken into consideration before a prosecution is actually seen. It's not everybody who commits an offense that is prosecuted at the end of the day. Okay, so we wait to see how it goes. So after this stage, give us the stages in the criminal process, if you are familiar so with after it. So this, after this stage, mm -hmm. right now, she has been arraigned. They would obviously have to ask um, her lawyers... Captain uh, Fa, that he would have to ask for, and, and his son, a father that is senior and a father that is junior, would have yeah. to ask um, for bail and should be processed. I don't really know if she'll be granted bail or not, but the, the you know all offenses are bailable, mm. and so she may be granted bail, she may be denied bail. It depends. Given on that the, she has sort of uh, 
if you like, jumped bail. She was repatriated and she sneaked in. Will that be a case for the prosecution to say that this is not somebody you can trust and but therefore you cannot grant bail to the person? We can only speculate. We can speculate what a judge will say, but the prosecution, <laughs> should they be saying, should they be thinking about that? Should well, the prosecution be saying that if the bail argument comes, mm -hmm. we present these facts to the judge, well, that here is an individual who, who was taken away, mm -hmm. she slipped back into the country, we cannot trust the process. If I was a prosecutor, I would argue, yes, I would argue that. that yeah. And I would also argue that looking at the tense nature of the case and how it's of importance, you know, in, in, in Ghana, it is very important that we keep her in custody to protect her herself. Yeah, that's another argument. Because yeah. if but you're leaving her out, out to yes, go, it may be people if, may attack her. Exactly. But if she's in the custody of national security, then if you like, come to national security. But she can also, when you leave her, obscure the evidence because bepotenting has become very important in this analysis. Yes. You leave her, she goes there, yes. tells people that if they yeah, ask if you, you they this, say yeah. this. If yeah. you do this, I'll do this because she's still quite powerful. Because if you look so at the facts, obscure the evidence, if yeah. you look at the fact she held a lot of influence in that area. Absolutely. The fact that she could tell farmers their land, their sweat yeah. and toil that mm. leave the land and shows that she may she go back influence. and... I don't and know whether you want to comment on the, the other thread that she carries photographs and videos of important personalities and therefore... Who said that? That's the thing, you see. Kweku Bako said it, we showed it. Oh, Kweku Bako, you see, we are in a free democracy. Let me not, let me not take <laughs> the, Let me not take the young man. These are, these are big battles, <laughs> big battles. Let me not worry the young man. Kweku, thank you very much for the presentation and uh, <laughs>